Hi, I'm Bill Shep, the second longest tenured writer at Late Night Late Show History, behind Steve Young and just ahead of the late Jerry Mulligan. Oh, I'm being told he's okay. I worked for Dave Letterman for 24 years. The first joke of mine that he ever did, he did 10 days before I was hired. It was a monologue joke. It was about Elizabeth Taylor had just remarried again. I have some bad news coming from the Elizabeth Taylor marriage. You know, that's right, Liz Taylor was married over the weekend to Larry Fortensky. This was Liz, I believe it was her eighth marriage. And already, apparently, they've had a horrible, horrible fight. The fight, as I understand, was about whether or not Larry should unpack. That's uh... what I heard. <laughs> That was the... I can't remember a favorite monologue joke that I've written, but I can tell you uh, my favorite monologue joke that I rewrote, and that's when Dave came back and did his first show, Back From Surgery. There was a joke that had been written by Mike Barry and Jim Mahone, who were the, the chief writers of the monologue during my time there, just wonderful guys and great writers. And they had written this joke that was good, but it was a little too short, and it needed to be embellished a little. So Dave and I kind of got under the hood and we, we stretched it out a little, and it, it turned out great. And he closed the monologue with this, and, and it was uh, quoted everywhere uh, the next day. So I'm really proud of that. I also want to clear up one thing. Uh, bypass surgery. Bypass surgery, it's when doctors surgically create new blood flow to your heart. Bypass surgery. A bypass is what happened to me when I didn't get The Tonight Show. Oh. I was hired as a monologue writer, but I was always uh, thrilled whenever I got something on the air other than monologue. And I wrote uh, what we used to call an Act 5 piece for later in the show. Uh, it was a piece called Paul. And it was uh, as if Paul Schaefer was hosting a Donahue-type show. Thank you, thank you, everybody, and welcome back. Welcome back to Paul. And our topic today, should a well-known disciple of Satan be allowed to host his own talk show. My guest is David Letterman. Uh, do we have any questions? Yes, I see a question over here. Yes, dear, what is your question? Excuse me. Uh, yes, Dave, how long have you known Satan? And also, what is hell like? <laughs> you know, I, I, don't, uh, I don't really uh, know Satan, and, and hell is uh, probably just about like this comedy piece, but maybe with more laughs. <laughs> I think there's a point uh, here that we're all overlooking. Just because you have satanic voices in your head, doesn't mean you have to listen to them. I, I know from experience. I think you should be the best you you can be. See you next week on Paw. I also uh, wrote the winning slogan for the Democrats in 1992. All right, our next slogan, please. Come on out and uh, announce the slogan for us. Oh, okay, how do you do, ma'am? Our uh, fourth slogan under consideration here tonight. We don't have a clue, but we don't have a quail. There you go. We don't have a clue, but we don't have a quail. I've made my decision, and I believe we're going to have to go with uh, we don't have a clue, but we don't have a quail. Congratulations, you're our winner. Hello, is this the governor? It is. How are you? Oh, it's Governor Bill. Very exciting, isn't it? I'm going to turn you over to the woman who uh, brought the slogan to us tonight, okay? Governor? Yep. Okay. Oh, he's, he's, he's getting pissed. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Say hello to the governor. Hello, governor. Hi, what's your name? Constance. Is Letterman behaving tonight? Yes. Oh, very beautifully, as usual. As usual. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my, my slogan for you, governor. Okay. We don't have a clue. But we don't have a quail. Nicely done. Very, very nice, thank you. There you go, Governor. Good luck to you. Thanks for your time, sir. Thanks, David. In the late uh, 1990s, uh, we had a writer named John Beckerman, who was with the show for a while, very talented guy. And uh, he wrote a series of uh, extras where I played uh, a guy named Kenny Ziegler who was Dave's old uh, fraternity brother, and we would run into each other on the street. Here's the thing I loved about this bit. 
uh, Dave and I would run each, into each other on 53rd Street and we would get all excited and then Dave would say, do you want to have coffee? And I would say, yeah. And then we would take off and run a full sprint down 53rd Street. Where the hell is Paul? You mean he wasn't there for the big introduction? Oh, wait a minute, I know what it is. I, I have to put on my glasses. I'll be right back. I'm going to find Paul. Is it out here? Did we go? Did we go out here? Oh, hey, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Ziegler. Ken Kenny Ziegler, Dave Letterman. Dave, Waterville High School, yeah, 1965. Right, how right, you right. doing? Good, I'm doing Nice great. to see you. Are you busy now? What are you doing? Uh, no, not really. What, you want to get some coffee? Yeah, that'd Let's be great. Go. Let's go. You live here? <laughs> what was the name of that health teacher we used to have? Mr. Uh, Mr. Ludlow. Mr. Ludlow. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Ludlow. Whatever happened to him? I heard the year after we graduated, they found him in the cafeteria <laughs> with his ass in a jello. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. Hey, are you still hosting that game show? Mm, mm. Oh, my God, that reminds me. I got to get out of here. Nice to see you, Kenny. Good luck. Bye-bye. Show's not over. What? Show's not over. Mm -hmm. oh. I got one more bow. You're making a fool of what? yourself. Uh, one more bow. Just I'm go. sorry. Excuse me. I, I got Pardon me. I'm sorry. I got. <laughs> I gotta go. During my time at the Late Show, I was the shop steward, the Writers Guild shop steward. When we went on strike in 2007, 2008, I was the strike captain, and uh, we came back a month before everybody else because uh, Dave's company made an interim agreement with the Guild. So we got to come back a month before the strike was settled. And the first show back, uh, the writers wrote a piece for me. I always appreciated uh, Dave's support of the union, and uh, it meant a lot to me that day, especially that it was the first day back for us. Thanks to the folks at L.L. Bean, staying warm is easier than ever. Take a look at this. You know what I'm holding here, ladies and gentlemen? This is from the new L.L. Bean Winter Catalog Collection. This is a pair, an actual pair, of electric underpants. <laughs> All you have to do every day... That's enough. Huh? Dave, Before Dave, you, that's what? enough. It's that's what? enough, Dave. Thanks, okay. a lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Late Show Strike Captain Bill Sheft. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to show you the conclusion of this joke. Why? Well, it's to remind you that even though the Late Show writers are back at work, the WGA strike still goes on. Thousands of writers still walk the picket line every day until their legs cramp and their backs ache only to return to a home they can now barely afford because of the producer's greed. So, to the arrogant media moguls who've gotten so fat off our sweat-soaked toil that they can no longer fit behind their oversized mahogany desks, I say to you, stop spending all your money on cufflinks, cocktails, and whores. <laughs> Stick a crowbar in your wallet and start bargaining in good faith with the writers. Maybe then America won't be denied the joy of seeing David Letterman hold up a pair of flaming underpants. Isn't that right, Bill? It is. Right, Bill. Nice job. This message has been brought to you by the Writers Guild of America. Okay, this next moment has already been uh, commemorated on the uh, YouTube channel by Barbara Gaines. It's my favorite in-show moment when I handed Dave the blue card uh, with the notation that somebody in the audience line had vomited during the show. Now, I need to add three points to this. First, in my defense, during the show, Barbara and I uh, would communicate. If she had something to tell me, she would write the note on her rundown. Whenever she wrote on a blue card, that was for Dave. So when she wrote that somebody had vomited <laughs> in the audience line. She was writing me the note, but I saw the blue card and dutifully ran it over to Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
Oh, uh, yeah? You know, ladies and gentlemen, when I was a small boy, I always wanted my own TV show. And, <laughs> and just now, something has happened that reminds me of the phrase, be careful what you wish oh. for. <laughs> be careful what you wish really? for. I'm sitting here right in the middle of men and their vegetables. Yeah. I think everybody's finally gotten into the spirit of this segment. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm handed a note. I'm handed a note, and, and it just, it boggles the mind okay. why this information comes to me. Yeah. Why this information comes to me now. No. <laughs> I'm going to share with you. Ordinar ordinarily, this would be confidential. <laughs> I'm going to share with you this, this note, all right? I I'm right in the middle of men and their vegetables. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Put it right there, and you folks at home okay. can read it along. Let's see. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You see what I'm saying? Why do I need to know? <laughs> yes. Why do I need to know now? Now, why? <laughs> Oh. Yes, and normally happens while they're watching the show. <laughs> but <laughs> here's what you do. Here, here's what you do. Clean it up, and a half hour later, let Dave know. <laughs> I don't care what he's doing. Get it cleaned up, yeah. and in a half an hour... <laughs> Slip it in. <laughs> get this right to Dave. <laughs> Because if he finds out later that nobody told him... <laughs> later in the show, I had Joe Grossman uh, come out. But anyway, I'm glad you all enjoyed uh, Men and Their Vegetables. And... Oh, jeez. Hi. Hi. You're, uh... I know you. You're one of, uh... You're a writer, right? Joe, is that your name? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what can I do for you, Joe? I'm sorry I vomited. That's, uh, that's okay. Here's the thing about Joe Grossman. We had a lot of staffers who were wonderful actors in the run of the show. But for my money, nobody better than Joe Grossman because Joe Grossman had that rare quality of being able to get laughs just by walking out. And then, of course, if he opened his mouth, it was, you know, another level. So anyway, uh, they've, been, they've been working on this uh, a urine purifier in space, and we have exclusive uh, footage from NASA. And, and like I say... <laughs> really, can it be any worse than what you've just sat through? Take a look. Okay. Forgot to plug it in. Still urine. I love that bit. And when my late wife, Adrian Tulsh, the comedian Adrian Tulsh, was in Sloan Kettering, in the bed for the last time in Sloan Kettering and hooked up, every once in a while, uh, the bed would start shaking and she would start giggling and she would turn to me and say, forgot to turn on the machine. Uh, so I will always be grateful to uh, Joe for that. We had a running gag in the monologue where uh, we would hue uh, a photograph of Osama bin Laden's uh, lair that was destroyed, and we would uh, put up instead a photograph of Derek Jeter's mansion in Florida. And of course, maybe it worked the first time, but it didn't work the next 97 times. The writers wrote this uh, interrupt uh, for me, uh, just delighting in the fact that once again we were running the shot of Jeter's house. Here now is a picture of the Playboy Mansion. Take a look at this. Oh, no, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm sorry. Hold it. That's, <laughs> forgive me, that's Derek Jeter's place. We've had a lot of, <laughs> a lot of trouble with this. I'm so Hi. sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill Sheff, late show writer and the author of the Jeter's Place joke. You know, we've been doing it for weeks now, and the verdict is in. Everybody hates it. The viewers hate it. The staff hates it. America hates it. If you'd like to register a complaint about this gratuitous, 
marginally funny, never-ending nightmare of a running gag, send an email to IHateThatJoke at gmail.com. Maybe we'll read your email on the air. Until then, I'll see you at Jeter's place. <laughs> you see what I did there? Good night, America. The longest laugh that I heard in my 24 years uh, working for Dave Letterman and working on both shows, and, and, and I'll argue that it's the longest laugh in the history of the show, we were celebrating Dave's 30th anniversary in late night, and they, uh, they put together a top 10 of the longest tenured staffers. I believe uh, she was at number eight, my good friend, the executive producer, Jude Brennan. And uh, I guess she had an item, but we replaced that item at number eight. We did this during the meeting before the show with something that uh, she had said uh, during uh, the rehearsal. I believe the laugh is 21 seconds. Uh, number seven, oh, it's our dear friend Jude Brennan. Started here in 1980, 32 years. That includes The Late Show and The Morning Show. 32 years, ladies and gentlemen. And the number seven thing uh, one of the staffers would like to say to me, take it away, Jude, number seven. I will not be berated this way. Go <laughs> yourself. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, in and of itself, that's plenty funny. It's also a little something from rehearsal. If you look me up, on YouTube. I believe that the most uh, popular clip of me, Bill Sheft, on YouTube is something that was uh, shot without my knowledge or consent. I was not uh, aware of this. Just watch the concentration. I, I should have been a diamond cutter. I almost made it till the end of the run without thoroughly embarrassing myself. But by the same token, of course, that clip was included in uh, Barbara Gaines' epic final show, Foo Fighters montage. So I'm not uh, totally upset about that. We have some footage uh, now of a guy on our staff a few weeks ago uh, during a commercial break, and he was eating a cookie, and it was behavior I'd never witnessed before in my entire life. Do you know what I'm talking oh, about? No, uh, how could it be so bad? Well, here it I was is. just eating a cookie. Here, no, it wasn't eating a cookie. It, he was selectively removing parts from the cookie. Oh, well. It goes on forever. Can we roll that videotape? <laughs> there he is. Yeah, now he's got the glasses, oh, oh, oh. and now he's really going to... Oh, there we go, oh, now. Oh, no, he's, uh, uh, he's zeroing in on it now. <laughs> I think we could use a little holiday music, actually. Yeah, that's good. That's it, we'll save that one. <laughs> Yeah, huh? Sure. It goes on and on and on. There you go. What becomes of the stuff in the cup? I know you're asking yourself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Bill Schiff. Take a bow, Bill. There he is. That was great. I would uh, try to keep him loose. He would say, uh, Everybody on the staff hates me. And I would say, not, not everybody. I think we could come up with a list of four or three people that don't. <laughs> it was just, all I wanted to do was keep 